Hey everybody, I'm Iron Obi and I'm back here again. And if you've been a watcher of my content or just keeping up with the Destiny 2 uh, streams and twabs that keep coming out this week at Bungie, uh, you'll know that we are preparing and gearing up in about a month for Forsaken to be coming out officially to change up everything that we do and play in Destiny 2. And they released, Bungie that is, released a big twab uh, yesterday and I wanted to go through and break that down and I'm going to be calling this probably recurring series and it's just going to be called uh, Destiny 2 Twab Review. Insert snappy title here. But I'm just going to go through and just break down what we got because we got a ton of information from economy changes to weapon slot changes to how Eververse is going to be changed. Like a lot of things are going to be different for Forsaken and we also are going to have a little bit of downtime between August 28th and September 4th, but we'll get to that. I'm just going, so this is just going to be me kind of reading, just if you want to put this on in the background, just kind of like, you know, mental note while you're doing something, it might be a fairly long video. So let me go ahead and get started on this. One target we've seen a lot of questions about is how we'll migrate from old weapon mods to new weapon mods, and starting on August 28th, your current mods will be deprecated, and while your inventory will tell you that you can simply discard the materials and parts. September 4th, the Gunsmith inventory will be dedicated to new Forsaken mods. So I like that they're taking mods, sort of removing them. I think they're going to be working on them. Between now and the preload on August 28th, use your Year 1 mods to lock in the elemental damage type for the weapon you want in your Year 1 weapons. Because, uh, as you know, believe, believe, a lot of those stuff is going to be changing. So things that were in the energy slot are going to be moving the, to the kinetic slot. So... You got an interesting, it's nice to get clarification on the weapon system. I was very unsure how it was going to work for the longest time. I didn't know if it was like you could put anything anywhere, or it was that certain guns will now be in certain places, and that does seem to be the way. So you can technically rock three different types of hand cannons, or three shotguns, but, you know, that one shotgun, which was originally in the heavy slot, is now permanently in the kinetic slot, and is not going to be moved back. So again, but the, we were talking about, and I'll talk about that in a second, but we're talking about your mods for armor, so your mods for your weapon damage type, so solar, void, or arc. Uh, you might want to put those into the guns that you want now, because on August 28th, that old mod slot will go away, and you'll no longer be able to insert any mods into year one gear or change the damage type of the element. So if you want to have a locked-in element for some of these guns that you haven't done yet, do that before the 28th. You have 18 days left to do that. Make sure that is something that if you want to do it, prioritize it. Some weapons will move into the kinetic slot, like I said, and will not retain elemental damage type regardless of what mod you had applied. The Ikelio sniper rifle and shotgun will be locked to solar, so you can't change those. Here are the legendary weapons that will be moving to kinetic. Belligerent, Shepherd's Watch, Hawthorne's Field Shotgun, very popular gun, Alone as a God, I believe that's the sword, I think, or the sniper rifle. Perfect Paradox, the Frigid Jackal, and Silicon Neuroma. So those are all the guns that are, most of the guns, or the weapons that are legendary that are moving the kinetic. So again, if you want to, and this is, I'm going to prioritize this, if you want to have a specific damage type solar void arc on a weapon that isn't any of those, go ahead and put something in it, because after 28th of August, you will not be able to swap in and out those damage types because that mod, old mod slot, will be gone. I'm talking about weapon, su weapon tuning and systems um, aren't the only valuable things that are coming to changes in Forsaken. When your next journey begins, you also discover new ways to earn rewards and become more powerful. Uh, and the investment team is talking about just kind of the goals and progressions, experience of leveling and powering should be meaningful, of course. Players should have a sense of discovery when earning rewards for different activities. We want to see, you know, those days when you're impressed when someone's in the town, you're like, whoa, look at them, they're 400 power, they're 400 light level, that's so impressive, they're really, really cool. And sorry if I'm talking a little bit low, it's loud, it's not loud, it's, it's late where I am, that's how, that's how late it is, I'm mixing up words. When players accomplish something difficult, the reward should be special or unique, but not all sources of power in a week should be apparent on the director. So they want to kind of maybe keep some of that stuff hidden from you to kind of make you work, make you work for it rather than just like, they want you to kind of get into a rhythm, you know, go back to kind of the hobbyist of it, you know, going back and, you know, I'm getting logging in, doing my thing, doing my thing, rather than just kind of like be jumping on a wheel. They want you to kind of maybe discover a little bit more. In year one, an activity such as a raid would have an absolute range of power that it could generate. Rewards would only grant a small difference in power level, even if you were overcoming the challenge while underleveled. 
uh, Forsaken, they're going to be scaling the power production of all content by the difficulty of that content. So, like people really liked in the beginning, if you manage to beat the raid while 40 under the recommended level, you should expect to receive better rewards. This was a big contention when the game first launched. No, no, sorry, not the game first launched. Warmind first launched, where people were doing like the 365, 350 strikes, 340 strikes, and people were getting like 3. 30, 35 gear, and that was like, why, why is this not happening? So it looks like they're just kind of, you know, punching home. But, you know, if you do something underpowered and it's hard, it's, you know, if you beat the raid and the raid's a powerful thing and you're under leveled for it and you beat it, you should expect to receive better rewards because of, or at least that power level jump should be more noticeable, like going from 380 power to 440 power, some crazy amount. When players earn powerful rewards, these items should never scale down to where they do not increase in power, much like the War Mind Strikes. Even if your power is 100 over an activity's recommended level, it should still grant a reward at least one power level above your current average. I agree. You don't want to go into content and get something that's not helping you move farther, especially if it's difficult content. This means that players should still benefit from grouping with teammates who have accomplished as much as they have. Uh, they've also created new multiple sources of power for powerful rewards that refresh on different cadence. Then the weekly reset, the goal is to provide more to do with players who want to play a variety of activities. Nothing wrong with that. That said, and not every reward you find in the wild will be a powerful upgrade. We don't need that's okay. You're not, you don't have to get everything. We're still going to get junk items. I wouldn't expect to get something better every time I do anything. Uh, we don't want to spoil the entire journey of max power, so we'll be leaving it in the hands of the players to discover the best ways to reach endgame. That's a great idea, Bungie. Let us discover that. It gives people and players more rewards and just, you know, internally just to like, oh, I found this out. This is interesting and nice to know. On milestones, if you go to your back button and, you know, you hold holding the back button or whatever, you pull up the director and you can see on the left side would be your milestone tray. You can usually check that. That's going to be revamped in Forsaken and will now specifically show the most important non-repeatable quests for every player to Destiny 2. Campaign quests are a good example, obviously, as they work right now if you haven't done all of them. Meanwhile, our world quests for destinations will now live in the pursuit section of your character inventory. Many milestones from year one have been converted to activity challenges. They will continue to grant powerful rewards, but they will no longer be displayed in the milestone tray. When you access the director, you'll see activity changes in the tooltip of the associated activity. Quick play, so when you hover over something, and believably, that's how it will work, much like if you go over, hover over the Crucible, it'll have challenges like Oh, quick play, complete Crucible matches, complete five, Crucible matches, you get some powerful gear. That's how that's planning to work. That's a nice change, it keeps the clutter away from your screen and having too much, because that can sometimes get annoying, you're like, okay, well, bleh. my list, my list on the left side of the director is two bars long, it's two bars thick or whatever, and it's like, there's a lot to do, so it's nice that they're going to kind of maybe minimize that. Now, this is an important one. For activities, the strike-based playlist for Destiny 2 Forsaken players has been updated to feature difficulty selection and modifiers. Heroic strikes are being retired on August 28th with the update for 2.0 of Destiny. Forsaken players, the strike playlist has three difficulties to select from. Power 300, Power 400, Power 500. Once you're 40 power over a given playlist, it will no longer appear as an option for you to select. Interesting, as you get stronger, they'll be slightly closing off the playlists. I don't know how I feel about them making specific playlists for the powers and then locking basically eventually two of them off, 300 and 400, once you reach the, you know, 600 power cap. Uh, again, but they, they said this ensures a healthy matchmaking pool when players reach endgame power levels. That's fine if that's going to work like that. I don't necessarily, necessarily have a problem with this, but... It's strange, it's just a weird thing to see, you know, not really, they're like, people would argue, oh, they're removing content, it's like, well, eh, not really, it's more difficult than that, but the Power, Power, Power 500 playlist will always be available. Strikes will have, my, mo, sorry, strikes will have modifiers, legacy players, if you do not own Forsaken and you are an old, older Destiny 2 player, the strike playlist matches the legacy, legacy playlist that is currently available in year one. So that's not changing too much for you. Recommended power is 200. Strikes will, of course, have modifiers. Beginning 28th of August and September 4th, modifiers will be, modifiers will be unavailable for all strike playlists. Again, to August 28th to the 4th, we have this, like, about a week or so of just kind of downtime 
waiting for Forsaken to be released, and that's why we're getting that little section of downtime where people, maybe even me, will kind of take a break, break from Soul City Heroes and maybe Destiny 2 in general and just wait a week, do something else, play some other games. It's nice that they're letting us know that that is going to be happen. Bing. The Nightfall activity is also being revisited for Season 4. Prestige difficulty is being retired, but the base difficulty for the Nightfall will increase... Additionally, players will have the ability to choose from one of three Nightfall streaks each week. If there's a specific Nightfall unique reward that a given player is hunting for, this reduces the time they have to wait for the strike to be featured again. Good idea. This is a great change for Nightfall rewards. Uh, people don't like waiting. If you, if you don't know human beings, they don't like to wait for something. But while having three options, players may only select the selected strikes from which they own the appropriate expansions. Obviously, legacy players will still be able to enable modifiers via their challenge card. Scoring will not be available for legacy players in the 270 power Nightfall. So scoring will be going away if you do not own the updated content like Forsaken and most of the DLCs. This is probably why they wanted you to have the most DLCs. It's probably gonna be, we're either going to be revisiting stuff in story or we're gonna, you're going to be locked off from certain strikes and certain Nightfalls if you do not own that content. Meditations are being retired and replaced with a heroic story playlist, so no more Ikora stuff. New campaign missions will be featured at 500 power, while old cam campaign missions will be set to a power level relative to their release. This ensures likely to see players can still enjoy story activities at their leisure. Yeah. Ikora Ray Vanguard research reputation tokens will no longer be used as a currency after August 28th, and will be removed from player inventory, so they'll be taking those tokens away from you. The legendary parade gear will also no longer be available, so if you want it, hop on it before August 28th. Heroic Adventures are being added to all destinations. When that destination is the Flashpoint, one adventure will be selected to be Heroic Prote, with the exceptions of Mercury and Mars, because those are DLC-specific. They don't want to lock off that content for Legacy players. That's fine. That's a good idea. Those two destinations will function as they currently do, but they will gain an additional adventure per day when they're the featured Flashpoint. Hold on. When that destination is the Flashpoint, one adventure will be selected to be Heroic per day. Okay, with the exceptions of Mercury and Mars. Oh, okay. I see. When those two when Mercury and Mars are the destination for the Flashpoint, they will gain an additional adventure per day when they're featured. So again, kind of trying to put value in the you know owning the DLCs past Forsaken or you know owning them before Forsaken came out. <clears throat> Players will no longer be able to purchase normal adventure tokens from vendors on destinations other than Mercury and Mars. Activity modifiers will be shared across heroic adventures, heroic story missions, and strikes. This ensures that each day you know what to expect from the PvE content and that you play as a ritual. And that when we balance and tune modifiers, it's happening across the game. This will include one weekly singe, one daily buff, and one daily debuff. Good making those, you know, a little bit harder for heroic adventures. They're, they're okay right now, but... It's uh, they want to normalize that and play it as a ritual, and when they balance and tune it, that's okay. I'm fine with that. The brawler, brawler and grenade modifiers will have their recharge times just to ensure they're noticeable, rather than just kind of like ticking as they are right now. Adjusting your equipment for either also has a rather significant impact. We've seen some pretty crazy plays from the Solar Hunter in our playtests. Some experienced players out there may be reminded of the feeling found when they equipped nothing manacles in the past. Oh, I love nothing manacles. That's good to see. I love that on Destiny One Warlock. All right, and then we're going to go into the big thing, which is economy updates. This is very important information, so listen carefully as you can. For the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of players asking about items, currencies available in year one, and whether they continue to be available in year two or not. Expect the following changes on August 28th. That is the date for most of these things to be happening. When the 2.0 update becomes available, destination materials will become your main source of reputation on the respected destinations. Destination materials will be part of a cost to infuse different weapons and armor across your arsenal. Year 1 challenges that granted reputation tokens are being retired, but will be replaced by bounties offered on each destination that provide destination materials. Destination tokens and rare destination materials are no longer rewarded, but you can still redeem them for reputation if you have them in your inventory. Whether this means you can continue to pick them up or they'll just be gone, uh, I guess you're no longer rewarded for doing stuff on the planet. Anything that previously granted destination tokens or rare materials will reward common destination materials, materials moving forward. The gunsmith will also be updated in Season 4 in Year 1. 40 gunsmith materials required for reputation fashion. Now it's going to be 100. With how much you dismantle gunsmith stuff, 
this is okay. I think this is just kind of them going like, well, you know, you have 8,000 of it, so we're just trying to chew through you giving him those resources a little bit quicker, which is fine. Iron Banner Vanguard, Crucible Tokens earned in Season 3 are still going to be redeemable into Season 4, but Trials of the Nine will be on hiatus during Season 4, and his Reputation Tokens will not be redeemable. At this time, we have not determined whether it's currently will be used and when it returns. This is nice to see that they are taking Trials back to the drawing board, some kind of stuff like Gambit, and so much new content in Forsaken that just taking Trials away for a little while isn't a bad idea, in my opinion, and rework it, make it better, bring it back. Good idea, Bungie. We'll see you when Trials of the Nine comes back. Uh, real quick, these are kind of, that's really kind of everything for that, but just real quick, bring over some stuff that's going to be happening from today, the 10th, till the 28th. Lord Sadlin makes his final appearance in Season 3 next week. This will be your last change, but the last chance to earn really, really, really early. Really early in the morning, people. The chance to earn your Season 3 rewards begins August 14th, so in about four days, and it will be ending on the 21st. It's going to be Control, you know, changes. Obviously, you have Fire Pits. Um, there's also a new Power Play rule when capturing all three zones. It will lock them down for 20 seconds. This is kind of actually a... Uh, Kind of interesting, and at the end of power play, all zones will be set to neutral and must be replaced and recaptured. This will be uh, this will be an interesting game mode. I actually might jump into Iron Banner for for you know after not really getting super crazy into it because I wasn't big into the Titan Harbor. It'll be interesting to see what these changes will do for Iron Banner going forward into season four. We'll have to see. Starting in Season 4, speaking on that topic, Iron Banner will be updated to enable power level advantages like in the days of old. All players of Destiny 2, regardless of expansion ownership, can participate in the Iron Banner events. That's a good thing here. Year 2 rewards featuring random roles and compatibility with Year 2 modifications will also be available to all players. Players who acquire new power during the adventures in Forsaken will have an advantage, but we don't want to exclude anyone who wants to compete in Iron Banner and reap the rewards. Iron Banner rewards will be capped for legacy players at their maximum power available. I don't know how that's going to function. Um, again, if you have 600 power and you have none of the expansion content, your power level is going to be... It, Iron Banner sounds like it would be hard for you. It would be very, very difficult, unless everybody can be upgraded to the new power level, which I doubt is the case. As it says, Iron Banner rewards will be capped for legacy players at their max power level available. Trials of the Nine will be unavailable for the duration of Season 4. Like we already said, the design team is putting it back on the workbench and making it fit challenge for the Hardcore Warrior. When the weekly activity returns, it will require feature updated rewards, power advantages, and other gameplay changes. The final weekend for Season 3 Trials of the Nine will take place on the weekend of August 24th. Again, 28th is starting to be that deadline, so get what you need before that time. Of course, in Season 3, they introduced some changes, notably the renowned mechanic to faction rallies. The community responded with a lot of great feedback but how we could improve to the experience, improve it, and continue doing that. The feedback range and topics from experience rewards. Many of you expressed the following, and I agree. Don't want to feel forced into participating in every instance of the event each season, because sometimes, unfortunately, the, I would if the event kind of ended up being a little more interesting. I feel like that's really where that comes from, is not wanting to, like, like don't feel forced if you don't, you don't want to. You're like, well, it's just, it's just that it gets kind of boring after the first time you've done it. And make the event progression a bit less hardcore and more engaging. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea from Bungie's side. Not a bad idea. We plan to take that feedback and use it to improve activities and events in the future. When Season 4 begins, faction rallies will be on hiatus. Perfectly fine. I think people are not going to be upset with that. There's going to be so much content to do in Forsaken that that's okay. This will give us a good opportunity to focus on some other areas of the game that need attention and reevaluate re some of the fundamental aspects of the event. Uh, while it's on hiatus, faction tokens will not be redeemable. We'll learn more about the future TWAB. Um, for players who are unable to acquire a specific exotic weapon catalyst during se previous season factions, we are working on new ways for you to earn them. They will not be available at the beginning of Season 4, but we will provide more information on where these rewards will be due when they become available. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Now, Eververse, this is actually super interesting, and I think it's kind of where the TWAB really starts to teeter out and we go into community stuff, which I won't be highlighting, but this is really just the information that we want. So the goals and philosophies, full season of Prismatic Matrix, freely, free weekly Prismatic Facet, more bright dust earned from bounties, a lot of players to customize their guardians, things like ghost protections, legendary new weapon skins, and exotic ornaments and emotes. So Eververse Bounties, what is this? Similar to how other bounties work, Tests is going to start 
offering rewarding bright dust for players for for bounties that she'll hand out. And here's how so each bright and gram grants one bounty note in season four. Bounties refresh weekly, but players can acquire as many Everest bounties as they have bounty notes. So that's the way they're kind of capping you so you're not grabbing one every day or every week to complete them all and get as much bright dust. These notes are being exchanged for three different tiers of weekly Eververse bounties. Tier 1 costs an Eververse bounty note, rewards 20 bright dust. Tier 2 is three bright uh, bounty notes, 70 bright dust is reward. And then tier 3 is six bright, uh, bounty notes and 150 bright dust. You can carry one of each type at a time of the bounties, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, and they'll expire seven days after acquisition. So this is kind of a way to maybe cap us at the bounty so we're not earning too much. Believably, they don't talk about it here, but you'll still be able to dismantle things you get from the Prismatic Facet and from Eververse in general, so you can just diffuse those and get rid of them, and scrap them, and still get Bright Dust. The Prismatic Matrix returns in Season 4. We received a lot of feedback that players enjoyed this feature and would have preferred it if they stayed active on all of Season 3, which is true. I think I have that feeling as well. This time we plan to keep the Prismatic Facet, sorry, Prismatic Matrix, live all through Season 4. The weekly Prismatic Facet will be obtained from a special Tier 1 Eververse Bounty. This bounty does not require a bounty note. It will cost 250 Glimmer. Give us more ways to spend our Glimmer. That's perfectly fine. Players will still be able to hold three Prismatic Facets at a time. Again, continuing to get the theme of giving players more control of their Bright Dust Balance. Gain from dismantling... Okay, Bright Dust gains from dismantling Eververse items will be granted at a fixed rate. Players can now reliably dismantle items for specific gains. It's interesting, so maybe... If you have some Eververse stuff that you don't care, maybe dismantle it before August 28th to get as much potential Bright Dust as possible. Still need to get those microtransactions out of you, but, you know, giving us more ways to earn Bright Dust to earn stuff from Tess is not a bad idea. Uh, Eververse items will be retrieved from the collections interface like all other items. The exception is Year 2 Eververse armor, which, like any other armor with random rolls, cannot be reacquired from collections. The way in which players acquire and interact with emos and weapon ornaments has not changed. All other items can be retrieved from an, for an expense of Bright Dust. Current season, Eververse items which have not been acquired will be displayed in the collection interface until the end of the season. Past season, Eververse items will have that have not which have not been acquired will not display in the collections interface. This prevents players from having incomplete collections that cannot be completed at all. It's fine. We don't want to have that big old list where we're like, man, we can't do this. Get this off my list. Bright Ingram updates, new legendary weapon ornaments have been added to the Bright Ingram. This is kind of interesting, rather than just exotics, it's something more for the player to work for. These are unlocked account-wide for all other ornaments in the play game. A new ghost projection, which sounds cool. Category will also be added to the Bright Ingram. This account unlockable item permits players to put a little holographic badge, and I have a picture up right here, uh, above their ghost. This badge is only visible when the player has their ghost deployed for navigation mode, so when you're just over and over world and you're like, where am I going, ghost? Uh, weapons and armor mounts will no longer be dropping from the right engram. Fine, perfect. In their place, players will now see bounty notes, which is you can use to get bounties from tests that gets you right dust. Great idea. Eververse armor and perks. With the addition of random perk rolls and armor, we've made some changes to how perks are applied to Eververse armor. Eververse armor acquired from right engrams will have random perks when rewarded, as other armor does. Eververse armor acquired from sources like the Prismatic Matrix or the Bright Dust storefront will have fixed perks. Like the Red War campaign in Destiny 2, and Forsaken Bright Engrams will not be earned until you hit the level cap. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. As players complete pre-Forsaken campaigns, they'll be rewarded with an Eververse gift package tailored to each experience, mm -hmm. which will also include Bright Engrams. Once players reach their level cap based on what expansion they own, Bright Engrams will once again be rewarded each time a player levels up. Okay, so rather than just getting, you know, the thing for like now i think everyone regardless of expansion gets whatever the season three engram is along with the bright engram or whatever that looks like that's changing so that your engram and bright engram will be dedicated about what expansion you own important to know so that's changing for heading into season four and be changing officially believably on the 28th or september 4th so keep that in mind as for Everything else, I'm not really going over labs, but the last thing I will be touching on is if you've been working on your Solstice Armor, this is just a quick update before the video ends. Um, leading up to the beginning of year two, we're going to be seeing things like Double Valor Week, Triple Valor Week, and Final Double Valor Week. And this is, so your first Double Valor Week is starting today till the 7th, 17th, sorry, so it's a week of that. 
Then we have Triple Valor is from the 17th to 21st, and then from the 24th to the 28th is Final Double Valley, sorry, sorry, Final Double Valor Weekend. So again, these are really quick days. If you have your armor in the Crucible, it's get your Valor really quickly, level three. Do that on multiple characters. This is your time to do that. You're running out of it. So remember, 28th is the final day for stuff. So as long as you're just playing to get Valor from now till the 28th, you're probably going to get it pretty easily as long as you're continuing to play but that's really it for the TWAB here guys this overall this is a really good update I'm glad that Bungie put all of this information out so early I mean they could have waited and let us know you know a week before the game officially for Forsaken launched for Destiny 2 year 2 but they didn't I think this TWAB overall is a good indicator of what to expect going into year 2 Destiny and Forsaken um, and what we're leaving behind, again, trials being postponed, perfectly all right. Please, you know, it needs to be reworked, needs something that needs to be changed. I completely wholeheartedly agree. <sighs> Faction rallies, yeah, that looks like they're also putting them on hiatus. We don't know when Iron Banner will be coming back in Forsaken for Destiny Year 2. We have to assume it's probably going to be maybe a month out, really, once you experience that content in Forsaken, before you start going like, Iron Banner! Because there is a ton, a ton of stuff to do in Destiny Forsaken. Anyway, guys, I will also be linking the patch notes and the TWAB, everything down below. So if you want to go read that verbatim or you want to follow along while I'm reading off right here and kind of, you know, get your own thoughts off, um, you can do that. Uh, as for me, I am going back to bed. It is late, 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 late. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you like what I'm trying to do here, hit subscribe, hit that bell notifications for more constant updates on Destiny, Destiny 2, Destiny Forsaken, and when those events, and of course, when those events come back, and of course, when more TWABs come out, we can review those, and I can give you the breakdown. So if you don't feel like, you know, going to look at that stuff, I will let you know right here. But anyway, guys, I've been Iron Obi. That's the Destiny 2 TWAB review, and I'll see you guys next time.